Oh, my, my fault. Okay, these are robots. Your name is Greg. Are, are you? So, we are on the cusp of a new industrial revolution. Not one of steam or electricity, but of intelligence itself. At the recent GTC Paris keynote, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang didn't just announce a new chip, he unveiled a complete roadmap for the future. A future where AI factories mass-produce intelligence, powered by machines designed not just to compute, but to think. In this video, we'll break down the four pillars of this revolution that Jensen laid out. The rise of agentic AI that can reason and plan, the incredible thinking machine called Blackwell that makes it possible, the concept of AI factories that will change our economic infrastructure, and the ultimate destination, intelligent, physical robots that will work alongside us. Let's dive in. Well, we've got a new, we are starting a new wave of AI. In this last couple of years, we've seen enormous progress in AI's ability. Fundamentally, intelligence is about understanding, perception, reasoning, planning a task, how to solve a problem, and then executing the task. Perception, reasoning, planning, the fundamental cycles of intelligence. It allows us to apply some previously learned rules to solve problems we've never seen before. That's why intelligent people are considered intelligent, to be able to take a complicated problem, break it down step by step, reason about how to solve the problem, maybe do research, maybe go learn some new information, get some help, use tools, and solve problems step by step. Well, the words that I just described are fundamentally possible today with what is called agentic AI, and I'll show you more in just a second. In the physical implementation of that, the embodiment of that agentic AI, and the motion, now the generative capability is generating motion. Instead of generating videos and generating images or generating text, this AI generates Locomotion, the ability to walk or reach out and grab something, use tools. The ability for AI to be embodied in a physical form is basically robotics. These capabilities, the fundamental technology to enable agents, which are basically information robots and embodied AI, physical robots, these two fundamental capabilities are now upon us. This is the core concept. Jensen explains that we are moving past generative AI, which creates content, into agentic AI. He defines intelligence as a cycle of perception, reasoning, and planning. Agentic AI can break down a complex problem, research solutions, use tools, and execute a multi-step plan. He explicitly states that its physical embodiment, when the AI can generate motion instead of just text or images, is robotics. This clip establishes the why for everything that follows. And now, moving to GB300, it is completely in production. And this the machine was designed to be a thinking machine. A thinking machine in the sense that it reasons, it plans, it spends a lot of time talking to itself, just like you do. We spend most of our time generating words for our own mind, generating images for our own mind before we produce it. And so the thinking machine is really architecturally what Grace Blackwell was designed to do. It was designed to be one giant GPU. I compared it to the- Here, Jensen unveils the Grace Blackwell GB200 and gives it a profound identity. It's not just a computer, it's a thinking machine. He explains that just like humans, this machine spends most of its time talking to itself, reasoning and planning before producing an answer. This directly links the hardware's architecture to the needs of the agentic AI he just described. It's the engine designed specifically for this new kind of workload. How could we achieve 30, 40 times more performance in just one generation. And we need a 30, 40 times more performance because the reasoning models are talking to themselves. Instead of one shot, chat GPT, it's now a reasoning model and it generates a ton more tokens when you're thinking to yourself. You're breaking the problem down step by step, you're reasoning, you're trying a whole bunch of different paths, maybe it's chain of thoughts, maybe it's tree of thoughts, best of n, it's reflecting on its own answers. You've probably see, seen these uh, research models uh, reflecting on the answers saying, is this a good answer? Can you do better than that? And they, oh yeah, I can do better than that, goes back and thinks some more. And so those thinking models, reasoning models, 
achieved incredible performance, but it requires a lot more computational capability. And what net result, MVLink 72, Blackwell's architecture, resulted in a giant leap in performance. The way to read this is the x-axis is how fast it's thinking. This is one of the most important explanations in the keynote. Jensen quantifies the need for Blackwell. He explains that thinking, whether it's chain of thought, tree of thoughts, or self-reflection, generates vastly more tokens than a simple one-shot answer. Answering a simple prompt might be a few hundred tokens. An agent thinking through a problem might generate tens of thousands. This massive increase in computation is why the 30-40x performance leap of Blackwell over the previous generation is not just an improvement, but a necessity to make agentic AI practical and scalable. Made almost a decade ago that now everyone is awakening to. That in fact these AI data centers are not data centers at all. They're not data centers in the classical sense of a data center. Storing your files that you retrieve. These data centers are not storing our files. It has one job and one job only, to produce intelligent tokens, the generation of AI. These factories of AI are, look like data centers in the sense that they have a lot of computers inside, but that's where everything breaks down. How it's designed, the scale at which it's manufactured or scaled, designed and built, and how it's used and how it's orchestrated and provisioned, operated, how you think about it. For example, nobody really thinks about their data center as a revenue generating facility. I said something that everybody goes, yeah, I think you're right. Nobody ever thinks about a data center as a revenue generating facility, but they think of their factories, their car factories, as revenue generating facilities. And they can't wait to build another factory because whenever you build a factory, revenue grows shortly after. You could build more things for more people. Those ideas are exactly the same ideas in these AI factories. They are revenue generating facilities and they are designed to manufacture tokens. And these tokens could be reformulated into productive intelligence for so many industries that AI factories are now part of a country's infrastructure, which is the reason why you see me running around the world talking to heads of states, because they all want to have AI factories. They all want AI to be part of their infrastructure. They want AI to be a growth manufacturing industry for them. And this is genuinely profound. And I think we're talking about, as a result of all that, a new industrial revolution because every single industry is affected and a new industry. This is the big picture economic and societal shift. Jensen reframes the entire concept of a data center. He argues they are no longer just for storing files. They are AI factories whose sole purpose is to produce intelligence in the form of tokens. Crucially, he calls them revenue generating facilities, just like a car factory. This shift in thinking is why countries are now treating them as sovereign infrastructure, heralding a new industrial revolution where intelligence itself becomes a manufactured commodity. The same thing that's happening for cars is happening for a new industry. As I mentioned earlier, if you can generate video from prompts, if AI can perceive, it can reason, and it can generate videos and words and images, and just now with cars, the path, the steering wheel path, why can't it also generate locomotion abilities and articulation abilities. So that fundamental ability for AI to revolutionize one of the hardest robotics problems is around the corner. Humanoid robots are going to be a thing. We now know how to build these things, train these things, and operate these things. Uh, Humanoid robotics is going to potentially be one of the largest industries ever. And it requires companies who know how to manufacture things, manufacture things of extraordinary capabilities. This speaks of the European countries. So much of the world's industries are based here. I think this is gonna be a giant opportunity. Well, let's say it's a billion robots around the world. The idea that there'd be a billion robots is a very sensible thing. Now, why hasn't it happened? 
Well, the reason for that is simple. Today's robots are too hard to program. Only the largest companies can afford to install a robot, get it to teach it, program it to do exactly the right things, keep it su sufficiently surrounded so that it's safe. That's the reason why the world's largest car companies all have robots. They're large enough, the work is sufficiently repetitive, it is, the industry is at a sufficient scale that you could deploy robots into those factories. Almost everybody who's a Mittelstadt or small medium, medium companies or mom and pop restaurants or stores or warehouses, it's impossible to have that programming capability until now. We're gonna give you essentially robots where you could teach them. They'll learn from you. Just as we were talking about agentic AI, we now have humanoid AI that can learn from your teaching using toolkits that are very, very consistent with the Nemo toolkits I, I spoke about. Are you a petite garçon or petite bill? Okay, He's, Greg is a little girl. Now, look at this. Greg learned how to walk inside Omniverse, obeying the laws of physics. And by inside Omniverse, we created hundreds of thousands of scenarios. Then finally, when Greg learned how to operate and walk and manipulate in those environments on sand and on, you know, on gravel, on slippery floors, on concrete, on carpet, then when it comes, when Greg comes into the physical world, the physical world is just 100,001 version of the world. And so you learn how to walk in the virtual world and look at you now. This final powerful segment reveals the ultimate destination for all this new intelligence, showing how robots like Greg can be taught in a digital world to solve the decades old problem of robotic programming. This embodiment of AI is the ultimate culmination of the entire industrial scale transformation Jensen Huang described. First, the evolution of AI into a true thinker capable of complex reasoning. Second, the creation of purpose-built thinking machines like Blackwell to power it. And finally, the construction of massive AI factories to manufacture this intelligence as a new economic commodity. In essence, we are witnessing the blueprint for a future where abstract intelligence is forged in digital factories and then unleashed into our physical reality, changing everything.